state. I love Florida. And it's even. And then all of a sudden, we hadn't hit the panhandle, right? Anybody live in the panhandle? Oh, I love the panhandle. And, you know, and you had to see the people. They were so devastated. They were the media, the anchors. So they've been saying for months and months that Trump is going to get absolutely killed. I remember three weeks before the election, one of them, I won't say the name, he said, how is Trump going to lead the rest of his life? Because this is one of the most devastating defeats. He will suffer so badly. And his whole career, which is true, which is good, like your football team, right? How good are they? Frankly, frankly, all of your football teams, they do well, right? But this guy, and he was saying it with such joy, how is he going to, they were talking about it's three and a half weeks before the primary. I went and I told my wife, I said, man, that was pretty bad to hear. His whole life has been based on winning. And he is going to suffer one of the greatest defeats in the history of politics. Right, Jeff? That's what they were saying. We were going to lose the presidency. I was going to take down with me the House, and I was going to take down the Senate. And it was going to go down as the single greatest defeat in the history of politics. And three weeks later, we had the single greatest victory in the history of politics. That's what they said. We won, you know, I don't know if you know this, nationwide. Thank you. USA is right. Made in the USA. We're going to put that sign up, made in the USA. But, you know, on our products that we're going to start making a lot of. But it was like this, you know, terrible kind of a thing. Now, he was saying it with, he was very happy. But we then went back, and I went back to work. I went really down to work. And I didn't do interviews. All I did is stuff like this, the rallies. And I didn't want to do interviews because they'd cut your sentence off, they'd cut it in half. You'd make a beautiful statement, and all of a sudden you'd say, I didn't say that. Well, when they leave the back part of the sentence off, or they don't talk about the other half of the paragraph, it's not so good, right? And I said, I don't want to deal with these people. And I said, if you want to quote me, quote me from the speeches. Now I get nice quotes. But even there, they'll take, like, if you're doing a line, a funny line. I'll give you an example of what happened uh, today. One of the papers wrote a story. I was talking a lot of fun over the last couple of days. I said, you know, prior to the election, you people were strong and vicious and violent, and you wanted to win. Now, I'm saying it kiddingly, right? And you wanted to win, but you were vicious, as vicious as I've ever seen. And we all were laughing and having fun, right? And then I said, and after the election, meaning last night or the night before where I was in different places, like Pennsylvania, Hershey, Pennsylvania was unbelievable. But I said, and now you're mellow, you're low-key, you're just sitting back, you won, you won, you're chilling out. Okay, so I said that, and everybody laughed, and they had fun. So today, a couple of the uh, groups, uh, I won't tell you which station, but it's, it's ridiculous. It's saying, see, we were right. Donald Trump is calling his people vicious. Donald Trump. He said that these people are so bad. So we can't have a little humor, folks, because if we have humor, they're going to take it. And, you know, when you report it or write it out, it does sound that way. But when you see it, you know exactly what we're talking about. So they're very dishonest people. But we go down, but we understand we shouldn't change, right? We can't change. Because people get it, obviously, because I think I just heard a statement that we won like 2,700 counties. Where's Kellyanne? Kellyanne, where's our great Kellyanne? Come here. Come here. Come here. I got to get her up. She told me 2,700. So she didn't know I was going to do this. She didn't know I was going to do this. Where is Hope? Where is Hope? Hope, get up here, Hope. Hope, get up here. She's always on the phone talking to the reporters, trying to get the reporters to straighten out their dishonest stories. Hope and Kellyanne. So Kellyanne... Kellyanne, and you've seen her. Has anyone, like, you know, like, how about every day seen her on television, right? So in the history of politics of this country, 
She is the first campaign manager to ever win as a female. And she did a fantastic job. Kellyanne, tell them about the uh, county. Go ahead. Hi again. So, your president-elect Donald Trump won over 2,600 counties. It's huge. He also won 31 of the 50 states, 306 electoral votes. And had any of those graphics on TV, sir, said, road to the popular vote, we would have been in California and Illinois and New York, and we would have won the popular vote. But every graph has said, road to 270, so we figured we'll get 306 just to have a little cushion. <laughs> and there's one other thing that doesn't get a ton of coverage, which I think is incredibly impressive about the Trump-Pence victory. Donald Trump, your next president, turned 200 counties across this country from President Obama in 2012 to President Trump in 2016. Now, Hope Hicks is a tremendously talented person. She started off with us right from day one. She used to be in my real estate company. I said, what do you know about politics? She said, absolutely nothing. I say, congratulations, you're into the world of power, right? She knew nothing. And she was there the first day, and she was fantastic. And I just say a couple of words, Hope. You know, she's a little shy, but that's okay, because she is really, really talented. Hope, say a couple of words. Hi. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. And thank you, Donald Trump. We had a great team. We had a great team. So the other side, when we won so big in Ohio, and we won so big in Iowa, we weren't supposed to win like that. And we had those horrible exit polls. Remember the exit polls started coming out? And everybody in this, you know, they did that to depress the vote. Because in places like California and other places, you know, they see it because there's a three-hour gap. And they say, I love Trump, but I'm not going to waste my time. Because these exit polls came out, and my daughter and her husband, Jared, called up, Ivanka and Jared, and they said, Dad, it's looking really bad. I said, what's looking bad? I can't. I just left Michigan. I started speaking almost at 1 o'clock in the morning on election day. We had 31,000 people, inside and out. And I said, what's looking bad? And she said, those exit polls are just horrible. And it's not looking good. So I went to my wife. I said, you know what? I don't feel badly about this because I worked as hard as you can work. Don't forget that last month. I did two and three speeches a day like this. Big crowds. And I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about it. Maybe I'm wrong about it. Maybe you should say I didn't work hard and therefore I lost. You could use it. But I, I really did. I worked as much as you could possibly physically do. I don't think anyone's ever... I don't think anybody, and they've written this, I don't think anybody has ever worked harder in the last month of a presidential campaign than I did. I, nobody. And I covered 17 states, and I went to Maine. I needed one, because they all said, you can not get to 270, right? Remember? Or they'd say it a little different. They'd say, there is no path to 270 for Donald Trump. He will not win the election. So I said, I'll get to 270. I'm going to go to Maine 2, which is 1. Okay, it's got it half. It's called Maine 2. And I went there. I got it, too, by the way. I got that one vote. So, right? I got it. I got that one vote. But I went to Maine. And that's the beauty of this electoral system. You know, the other, if you go with, like, the popular vote, I'd go... New York State, California, back, forth, back. It would be much easier. The problem is every other 
place. You'd stop in Florida. You'd stop in Texas. You wouldn't see any place else. It would be so much easier. I think I'd actually do better. But you'd never see most of the country. The electoral vote, and I, I never appreciated it until now, how genius it was, what they had in mind. Because at the time, they didn't want everybody going to Boston and New York, and everything else would be forgotten. And now it's the same thing. It's genius. I'm telling you, it's genius. I went to 17 states. I went to states. I went to states that, you know, you just wouldn't go to. And they were great. And I went to places, frankly, that normally you wouldn't be thinking about too much. And they were incredible. And they came through for me. Most of them, most of them really, really came through. So then you had the Hillary people saying that Let's see. Right. We won. But you had the Hillary people on, and they were saying, we are going to win the state of Florida. We have information. We're going to win. I mean, maybe their information was how many people voted illegally. Maybe that was the information. They had. But of course, you know, when I say that, they'll say, isn't that a terrible thing that he said? Isn't that terrible? You got to look into that, folks. But. The problem is, when you win Florida by that much, there's nothing much they can do. You can't have people and numbers that's bigger than the number of people. So they said, you can't win, and we're going to, you know, do great. And we end up breaking news. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump has won the state of Florida. And these people are standing. I remember they had, they had one guy. I guess he was mid-level. And he was saying, we're going to win the state of Florida. He's representing her. We're going to win the state of Florida. We're going to win North Carolina. But Florida is really looking strong. And the announcer said, excuse me one minute. We have something breaking. Breaking news. Trump has won the state of Florida. And the guy's standing like, what happened? But then they said that I can't win North Carolina. And by the way, they raised $2 billion. They spent so much more money than me. I spent like peanuts compared to what they spent. Under budget and ahead of schedule. Does that sound good? Yeah. Under budget and ahead of schedule. Like we're going to have our roads built and our planes built. And our F-35 is one of the most expensive. Now we're going to straighten things out, but under budget. So what happens, you know, in the old days, you have some people here that will tell you, when you spend less money and win, that's much better than the other way. And I had cases where I was tied or up in a poll, but she had spent in a state like 50 million and I had spent like 2 million. And they said, Donald Trump is not spending the money. Like, and I'm saying, wait, that's a good thing. They don't understand it. That's actually a good thing. If I can do that, if I can do that, it's a good thing. I remember in the primary in New Hampshire, I love New Hampshire, and in New Hampshire, I spent a tiny amount, almost nothing. And another person, so I can't say anymore because they're, they're all friends of mine now, but so I won't. But another person spent like $22 million. I spent nothing and I won. And they said before I won, like, this person was doing great because he was spending much more money. I said, yeah, but I'm going to win the state. So remember, for all the young people here, when you spend less money and you win, that's a good thing, not a bad thing, all right? <laughs> Trying to the press. So then their next state was North Carolina, which is great. And they spent, they outspent me five to one at least. But I had great, I had my sons there and Lara and everybody. We had incredible people there. And they came out and again, Breaking news, Donald Trump has won North Carolina. That was unbelievable. And then Pennsylvania, we were doing so good in Pennsylvania, but every Republican for like 38 years has lost Pennsylvania. Some large, ridiculous number. And they always called it the bride that got away. I don't even know if that's politically correct when the press says it. 
Now, if I say it, they'll say it's not politically correct, but I always heard them say it, so for them it's fine, right? But they say the bride that got away because you thought every Republican for 30 years thought they won the state of Pennsylvania. It's a big state. And they didn't. So I said, we're going to win Pennsylvania. We had three congressmen there who were incredible. They said we're going to win. But I didn't want to tell that to anybody because everybody thought they were going to win anyway. So we're looking, and there's 1% left, and I'm leading by a lot. And even if I lost 100% of the 1%, there was no way I could lose the state. But they would not call the state. Now, I knew. In fact, I started accepting victory, because if I win Pennsylvania, now I win. And the other side is saying they're going to win Pennsylvania, but actually, when they looked at the numbers, they understood it, too. It was over. And then we had a surprise. Breaking news. Donald Trump has won the state of Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Right? And people are saying, where did that come from? What happened? Because we weren't expecting. We thought we were going to do well there, but we won it. And now they're in trouble. They're really in trouble. And I don't know if you saw there. They had the most beautiful stage. In fact, I wanted to swap stages with them around midway through. I wanted to maybe swap. You know, they had that beautiful picture of uh, the country and magnificent. You know, they had uh, they spent $7 million on fireworks. And they knew something was wrong. One of their people, who's a high-level guy, said, we made a big mistake. We made a big mistake. We're going to lose. And he was telling that to people. And I felt we were going to win. But then all of a sudden, they canceled their fireworks a weekend. And I said, because you know what I found? Fireworks just don't work when you lose. Do you agree with that? <laughs> Did you ever see one of your football teams, when they lose, have fireworks in the stadium? No. No, it's called depression. But they cancel their fireworks. And then just to be cute, we sent an offer in. We offered to buy their fireworks for five cents on the dollar. Right? They had a very good company, Grucci or something. Grucci. They had a great company going to do their fireworks. We offered to buy it for five cents on the dollar. We never heard back from them. But they had this incredible, they took the convention center. And I took sort of a small ballroom, because if I lost, I want to get out. You know what I did? Here would be my case. I'd come up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. My supporters, I love you folks. I love you. It was a movement, but it was a movement that didn't work. Right? Right? And I would have said, I want to thank my wife. I want to thank my family. Bye-bye. I'm out of here. Right? So I didn't want to really have this huge, expensive thing. So I had a ballroom in the city. But then all of a sudden, we started seeing we were going to win. And we knew we were going to win because we knew we won Pennsylvania, even though they wouldn't call it. They called it at 3 o'clock in the morning. They should have called it like at 1130 in the evening. I think because if you looked at the ratings, they were so high, they were making a fortune by not calling it, all right? But then we won, before Pennsylvania, the state of Michigan. Everyone said, oh. And then they started having the cameras. And then I said it last night. You had one guy who's really good. I mean, he's really good on the maps, right? You know who I'm talking about. And that map was so red. It was so unbelievable. That map that, you know, they used to show it, and it was really depressing. Everything was blue, blue, blue. They had the blue wall. Remember the blue wall that was unbreakable? Boy, did we shatter that wall, right? We shattered that wall. That wall was shattered. That wall will never be the same. So we broke the wall. So now we won Wisconsin. Now we won Michigan. And I'll never forget the guy. He was devastated. This was not in his play. He never even thought of this. And his hand is like quivering, you know, because he, he puts it on the map and the map turns around. <laughs> Donald Trump has won the state of Wisconsin. Oh, no. <laughs> Donald Trump goes, oh, no. Oh, no. No. Please check this. Please check this. Donald Trump has won the state of Michigan. 